And we're back, guys. Please like, subscribe, comment below. We are headed to the Adelaide International. That's in Adelaide, Australia. And we have the hometown lady in attendance. That's right. This is a 32-player tournament. And we have some big names in attendance. Ashley Barty will be on the ticket. That's right. She is healthy and she is back. And, I mean, Ashley Barty, the world's ranked number one. Um, and, I mean, she had a great year in 2021. Five single titles. That's right. She dominated the greater half of the year for the most part as long as she was healthy. Uh, we saw her run off 42 wins, only eight losses. And, I mean, she only has eight career single titles on her career. She's been around. She's been on tour for a while here. But, um, for the most part, we saw her dominate the first half of the year until she ran out of gas. She expressed she would be living in the States for much of the year due to so much going on in her country. She just could not head back there. So, she basically lived in hotels on the road. She said she would stay in the States and ride it out until she just ran out of gas. Uh, it was a shame to see her, you know, prematurely exit the U.S. Open with the loss to Shelby Rogers. And, you know, we didn't get the chance to see her at the historic Indian Wells. And the reality is the, you know, the finals, we did not see her there as well. That was a big disappointment. But she's healthy. She's back. And she has that potential to face Corey Golf here. Uh, which should happen essentially. Uh, Corey Golf here is the world's ranked 22nd player, and she had a really good year in 2021 until she got ill. Uh, 36 wins on the year, only 16 losses. Uh, she does have a single titles under her belt, and I predict if she can stay healthy this year, and um, she's going to win at least one or two single titles, and I expect her to go deep in these draws. Uh, look for her to do some big things right off the bat at the Australian Open. I think Corey Golf. I mean, she's definitely, she's only 17. She's one of the more fit um, ladies on tour. She has a great backhand. Uh, she has a great forehand. Uh, she just makes a lot of unforced errors. If she can take care of her serve and her double faults, she leads the tour and double faults and errors if she can clean that up she's a really solid player and she's only going to get better so definitely watch out for her if we can see an early matchup with her and ashley barty that's going to give us a lot of uh, a lot to gauge on where she's at currently in terms of form and uh heather watson she's going to take on aza tom janovic tom janovic is now a resident of australia she uh got her residency and she's ranked 45th in the world. She's never won a singles titles, though. Um, type of player that can go into the draw first or second round, but she normally struggles when she faces the tougher competition. Uh, she has a world's high ranking of 39th, um, but she makes a lot of mistakes. And playing someone like Heather Watson, uh, who's ranked 72nd in the world, but... Heather Watson had a horrible year last year, 11 wins, 21 losses, but Heather Watson has four single titles under her belt, and Heather Watson can play good coming towards the net. Um, she can hold her own on the baseline, doesn't have the best serve. Uh, she makes, she does make a lot of double faults and errors, but so does Tom Janovic. Tom Janovic makes a ton of errors, but if Heather Watson is in shape and she's game, this is a matchup that Heather Watson can definitely win, so watch out. Sophia Cannon, one of my favorite players on tour, she has the potential to meet someone like Body or Coco Golf here uh, deep in this tournament. Sophia Cannon is the world's ranked 12th player. Um, she had a horrible year in 2021, let's be honest. She had surgery. She signed a huge deal with Motorola, which it seemed like once she signed the deal, she just got injured. Uh, but she did have surgery. She missed out on the Olympics. We were uh, kind of sad to not see her in, in the Olympics. She had huge plans at Tokyo, and I think she would have did really well. Uh, but Sophia Kenna has five single titles under her belt and career high ranking number four. Um, we saw her capture her first Grand Slam at uh, the Australian Open in 2020, and a lot of players don't have a Grand Slam under their belt. But uh, And she almost had two, uh, but she fell short at Roland Garros. But nonetheless, Sophia Kennan is back. Great defense. She doesn't beat herself. She's not the most athletic. She's not the toughest or strongest. But mentally, she is the toughest. She doesn't beat herself. She stays in every match and doesn't quit until she breaks you and she finds a way to win. 
Uh, glad Sophia Kennan is back. Uh, Paul Bedosa, Victoria Azarenka, right off the bat, we have a rematch of the Indian Wells. Uh, we saw Paula Bedosa. It looked like she was headed towards a finals matchup with possibly Annette Contave in the WTA finals, but she just choked. She just faced uh, a little more stern competition, you know, and players like uh, Garbenia Muguruza, and she really had nothing for it. Um, she did hold her own against Azarenka, though, at the Indian Wells, and she pulled it off. Um, I think Azarenka is going to definitely want payback in this one. But nonetheless, uh, Paula Badosa has been a big focus in the offseason. She's um, definitely been working hard in training. The videos are out there where she's showing she's in the gym focusing. 43 wins last year. Two singles titles. The biggest, of course, coming at Indian Wells, winning the biggest purse of her career. She made more in that purse than she did in her total career combined. So great job for her. Uh, but nonetheless, um, world ranked number eighth player. We're going to see what she has uh, representing Spain. Victoria Azarenka, Hall of Famer, no doubt. Age 32, uh, 21 single titles under her belt. Decent year last year, 28 and 9. And, um, you know, that gave her a rank of the world's 27th ranked player on tour. But nonetheless, Victoria can beat anyone on tour at any given moment. Uh, she's very skilled. Great forehand, great backhand, great defense. Transitions great to offense. Uh, decent serve. And IQ, though. She has the IQ to be any player on tour. And, I mean, she's been off for a while. But also, for the most part, has been training, has been fit. So, if the two ladies give their all, this is definitely a match that can go three sets. Um, I think Azarenka is definitely going to want payback, though. But get your popcorn. This can go either way. Um, Kvitova. Um, who knows? She, she said she's going to retire soon. We don't really know what's going on with her situation. The world's ranked 17th player. Um, 27 single titles. I mean, from the Czech Republic, age 31. She's getting up there. Taller players. She's six feet tall. She does struggle playing a lot of these shorter players, but she's not going to have any issue in this first round matchup against Han. That's a matchup she'll get by. But I am very excited to... Uh, whew, Definitely looking forward to Ekaterina Alexandrova, the world's ranked 34 player. Only one single titles on her career. Mediocre uh, year last year, 26 and 23, barely above 500. But she's got a very strong serve, and she's a very tough player from Russia. She's going to be taking on one of my favorite players on tour, Leila Fernandez, the world's ranked 24 player. She's 19 years old, 25 and 17. Uh, we saw her win. Uh, she only has one single title, which we saw in Mexico uh, in early 2020 to start off the year. But 25 and 17 last year, pretty me mediocre career uh, so far. I mean, nothing really great, but the wins that she had last year, unbelievable. I mean, we saw her just demolish that U.S. Open draw. We saw her beat the likes of uh, Angelique Carver. We saw her beat the likes of um, Elena Svetlana. We saw her defeat Naomi Osaka, uh, Sabalenka. So Fernandez um, has the tools to get out of this matchup. Um, outside of what Layla's done in the U.S. Open, excuse me, this is a matchup that Alexandrova will probably win and be the favorite. But Layla's the favorite, and she's only getting better. And I think she's going to get past Alexandra over here. But this is going to be a good matchup and could potentially go either way. Huge fan of Fernandez. I think she's doing some great things right now. And she is practicing really, really hard. And I hope she goes far. Um, Iga. Iga's back. Guys, Iga Swatek is back. The world's ranked number ninth player. We saw her have a huge collapse here. And it was kind of sad to see her have this collapse here in the World Finals where it seemed like she really couldn't get a win. Um, Eagles, the world's ranked number ninth player. We saw her get her first major at the Roland Garros. And we saw her beat Sofia Kennan. She represents Poland, age 20 years old, 
36 and 15 in 2021. That was enough to get her to the WTA finals where she disappointed, but nonetheless, uh, she's a great clay player. Uh, she's on hard. That's not her strongest surface, but nonetheless, um, she does have, she, she, she has a decent game. I mean, she has a serve and volley type of game and she's a rhythm player. She's strategic. She uses her um, one-two punch to get by players, but she doesn't have the best serve. If she wants to go deep this year, she's definitely going to have to work on her serve. That's something that just needs to improve. But Elena Rabakina, we saw her get past uh, Sanders in the first round. It seemed like Rabakina took off the second set, but she did uh, wrap it up in 3-6-1, finishing the, the third set with the win there. She will advance to the round of 16. Rabakina, great serve. She struggles against shorter players, um, but she's definitely going to have to, you know, clean up her errors. She does... If you take her three sets normally, uh, she folds in the third set. 33 and 23 on the year. Uh, she has two single titles on her career. We saw nine, between 19 and 20, uh, Raba Kinka really burst on the scene there. Uh, but taller player, she does struggle against the shorter players there. Um, Marie Sacri. Uh, she, yeah, she, she's, uh, she advanced. She did get the win over... Uh, Tamara and uh, that did go three sets there. Um, I think Zachary's just probably getting herself in playing shape. But nonetheless, Zachary, we saw her at the finals there. We saw her defeat Sabalenka. She had a chance to get past Annette Conteve and seems like she just ran out of gas. Uh, 38 wins last year and, you know, 20 losses. Um, career high ranked six, one single titles on her career, but nonetheless, Marie Sacri, much like Corey Golf, makes a lot of mistakes, but very strong physically. Uh, if she can work on her mental toughness, reduce some of those unforced errors and double faults, that you know she gives away so many points through her errors. If she can clean that up a lot, uh, she'll be a much more dominant player. You know, definitely see her win a lot more tournaments. But Sagri's the type of player where she can go deep in any draw, whether it's a major or non-major. So she's always a threat to win it, but normally her mistakes and errors, she runs into a player that's more solid and disciplined, and normally she does end up fall, falling short. Uh, Shelby Rogers, uh, she's also in this draw here. We'll see what she can do. Shelby Rogers has never won a single title. Uh, pretty mediocre year last year, 29 and 23. Shelby Rogers... If her serve is on, she, she's, you know, she's good and she's thriving. But if her serve is not on, she's just not the type of player that can, I mean, we saw her upset Ashley Barty in the U.S. Open. But if Shelby Rogers, if her serve is not on, she's just not the type of player that can go deep in draws and get past the third round. Um, definitely not. But, you know, this is a matchup here where she should meet Zachary and Zachary should advance as long as Zachary is in shape. That's a matchup that... Zachary should win pretty easily with her strong um, serve and just her overpowering with her backhand. Uh, Shelby's definitely not the net Conteve type of player that has a variety. Shelby's very easy to figure out, and Zachary will, will beat her uh, in the round of 16. Um, if we take a look here, um, Zabalenka has the bye. Uh, Zabalenka, we saw... Ooh, it's pretty sad um, what happened to her in the world finals. She just she just had a breakdown there. Uh, but nonetheless, a great year. 45 wins, um, only 18 losses. Two single titles when she was finally able to get past Ashley Barty. Eight single titles on her career. World's rank number two. Um, Sabalenka, look, we know she has the power. She has the great serve, one of the strongest serves on tour. We know she has the backhand. We know she has the forehand. Um, but she's got to keep her composure. Composure. She's got to be more prof professional, and she definitely has to to not beat herself. Um, anyone that watched the WTA Finals, that's a snapshot of Sabalenka's Lincoln's game. She beats herself all the time. She breaks down, and she loses her cool. And sometimes she can be disrespectful to her opponent. And when her opponents see that, she wears her emotions on her face. It gives them more confidence to beat her. You know, we saw with Leila Fernandez in the U.S. Open against Sabalenka. That's a match at Sabalenka. She showed way too much emotion and let Layla confident enough that Layla could 
could hang around and eventually steal the max and that's exactly what she did but this here this tournament here uh the competition she's going to run into possibly if we take a look here um I mean, Kukova, I like Kukova, Kukova's power. She, she should be able to get into the round of 16, Kukova, but nonetheless, this is going to be a bracket where she reaches Fitlana. Okay, Lena Fitlana, the world's ranked 15th in the world. Uh, last year, 41 wins, 20 losses. Uh, it's a shame she, Fitlana didn't make the finals, but she's won the finals before. She's been a runner up before in the finals, so that's nothing new to her. Uh, Svetlana only won one title uh, last year, but she definitely had a great season. World rank number three in 2017, 15 titles on her career. Svetlana, the only knock on her career is not winning a major yet. Um, I hope that can come here in Australia. Svetlana is great on defense. Uh, this is the type of tournament where Svetlana can win. We all know Svetlana has dominated Ashley Barty in the past. Ashley did get revenge last year. But nonetheless, uh, this is the type of tournament Svetlana can win. Uh, we know she can beat Ashley Barty. Uh, Sabalenka does have the strength where she can compete with Svetlana and possibly hit her off the court. But Svetlana makes um, players change their game with their great defense and I could definitely see Svetlana beating Sabalenka especially with her current current form in the WTA finals so uh, I look forward to seeing a match of Elena and Sabalenka I think that's going to be great tennis get your popcorn they can meet in the quarterfinals here I think it will happen and I'd probably pick um, Svetlana to advance uh, Svetlana if she comes in shape and game holds her defense I think Sabalenka can make enough mistakes to where Svetlana can win that matchup. Um, but I do hope Svetlana can get a major this year finally. She's going to have a great opportunity, great uh, chance here at the uh, Australian Open to win it. As the tour progresses and a lot of players play themselves in shape, um, she will always have a chance to go deep in the draw, but it definitely gets tougher. Tennis now is more competitive than it's ever been and for some of the players i mean svetlana is i mean she's only uh, what is she like um 27 she's only 27 but you know players like coco golf 10 here 10 years or junior it's getting tougher and tougher these younger players are so strong and i mean if you take a look at osaka who i think osaka is um, in her early 20s i want to say maybe maybe 20 22 23 something like that sabalenka's 23 it's getting, uh, it's becoming a young woman's sport. Um, but I think Svetlana has the tools. She has IQ, um, decent serve, decent backhand, decent forehand, but very great on defense. She forces you to play uncomfortable and make mistakes. And that's what you're going to need to go deep in these, these slams and these majors. If Svetlana can finally get her major this year, um, she's definitely approaching a Hall of Fame type of career. Um, and what what country not better to do it than Australia? The Australian Open, the very historic Australia Open. Uh, that's definitely one of the best places to get a major for her game. It's a hardcore tournament, and that's where she thrives. Um, so we have a lot of storylines uh, to start this season coming up. We have Naomi Osaka. Uh, she's going to be taking place at the um, International 2 Tournament. I'm going to be doing a review and breakdown of that coming up. Um, but that, that draw is looking really, really good. And I can't wait to discuss that. Now, Osaka, looking at her early on, I can, I can tell she's not in the best uh, form. She's not in the best shape or form, so she's definitely going to have to play her way into shape coming up. Um, we're going to see whew, we're going to see how long it takes for her to get started there. Um, that's the official Melbourne Summer Set 1. That's going to be in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, she's facing uh, Cornet in the first round there. Cornet is a decent, solid player. Um, Cornet normally struggles against players with um, power 
and Osaka, I think she should get past that. But some other players are not big names in that uh, tournament. Um, Karina Matova, uh, she's going to be taking on a qualifier there. That's going to be a great match. Senekova, uh, double champion. Uh, she's going to be taking on a qualifier. That's going to be great. Uh, Kanepi, who has a strength and power. Uh, she's going to be taking on Christian and Allison Briss, who had a horrible 2021. Uh, she's going to be taking on uh, Vera, Senva Vera. Uh, that's going to be a good match up there. Lauren Davis is in there. Uh, short and uh, very fast. Can move around. And Halep's going to be in there. Uh, I think we have the potential to see Simone Halep and Osaka in the finals there. Definitely setting Osaka up for success with that weak draw. But she's going to have to she's gonna have to earn it. She's going to have to be in shape to win it. And we're going to see what's going to happen there. Uh, we also have the Melbourne Summer Set 2. Uh, some great players in that tournament as well. Um, Sashnovich, who I like her game. I think she's had a great year. She advanced to the round of uh, 16, so look out for her. But nonetheless, hey, hey guys, thanks for listening. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. I have a few more videos coming. Uh, tennis is back. I'm excited. Let me know who you think is going to have the best season this year. And hey, predict the major winners. Tell me who's going to start off with the Australian Open win. Um, who's going to win uh, Wimbledon? How about the, the French Open? Uh, the U.S. Open? Let me know, guys. Thank you.